Hey everyone, this is Nick, and as you might have seen previously, I recently moved from Firefox to Gnome Web, or Epiphany. All the reasons for that move are explained in a previous video, go check it out before watching this one if you haven't watched it yet. And now it's been a month since I've been using Epiphany as my daily driver on my laptop and on my desktop. So let's see how well it went. Although it couldn't go any better than how this segue to today's sponsor is going. Thanks to Safing for sponsoring this video. You might already have seen their Portmaster tool on the channel. It lets you monitor and control any detail of your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface through the use of block lists, profiles depending on your current connection, and per app settings. It's also completely open source and free. Now, what you might not know about Safing is that they're also developing the SPN, the Safing Private Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. So with the SPN, you can virtually be everywhere at once. If that's something you'd like to try, or if you want to support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now and you'll get it for free through the whole month of December. So just click the link in the description below to either get the Portmaster tool or to subscribe to the SPN. The GNOME Web is a nifty little browser and I used it on both elementary OS on my laptop and on Fedora on my desktop. And yes, you heard me right, I made the browser change video on the Plasma desktop on Manjaro that I have since replaced with Fedora and GNOME. I used version 40 on elementary OS, the one they provide as the default, and version 41 on Fedora because that distro has the latest GNOME releases. So let's begin with the good stuff on a positive note, because the rest of that video is not going to be high praise. So first, Epiphany looks right. If you're using a GTK desktop or even a Plasma desktop with a the correct GTK theme, it looks really nice. It follows the guidelines for elementary OS and for GNOME, and it behaves like a native app would, with right-click menus that actually look normal, a preference window that looks like every other preference window, and isn't a web page. It has these beautiful bottom rounded corners, it's just nice to see. And I know some people don't give a crap about that, and that's okay. Me personally, I'm a sucker for consistency and these little details, if that makes me a weirdo, so be it. I mean, I make videos about Linux on the internet for a living, so yes, I believe I am a weirdo. Now second, Epiphany uses WebKit, which gives it a nice advantage for the freelance work I do with my previous company. See, everyone there uses Macs and Safari on desktop and mobile. Well, except our developers, because they're not crazy. And Epiphany just so happens to share Safari's rendering engine. And generally, when I identify a bug on Epiphany, it's also going to happen on Safari, so it's a nice way to debug for what my previous boss uses. Now, always focus first on the issues that your boss might run into. It's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Third, Epiphany syncs with my Firefox account, so I can share bookmarks, logins, and passwords between computers, and with my mobile phone. That is not an advantage that's exclusive to Epiphany, and it's not perfect, but it's super important to me, and I like that I can do it. Fourth, Epiphany on a laptop has two finger swipes to go back and forward, which is an amazing way to navigate using a touchpad. And why are other browsers not doing it by default, seriously? And finally, Epiphany doesn't come with an overload of features. It's a browser, not an OS, not an app store, it just displays web pages, plays videos, blocks ads, and stores your login info to help you connect to all your various websites. Well, that's what it's supposed to do anyways, because it has major issues with every single one of these points. First, the website compatibility. Epiphany has issues on that front. It might use Safari's rendering engine, but it is surprisingly less capable. Here are a few examples I happened upon. AdSense doesn't work on Epiphany. You'll frequently see a blank web page with an error message, just like on Firefox. The KDE Store or Plink don't work either. These websites let you download themes for your desktop, but the theme pages don't display anything. On Patreon, where I post a weekly podcast for my supporters, I couldn't upload an audio file half the time. It would just spin over and over again and never actually upload. And I guess my Patreon subscribers wouldn't really mind if the podcast didn't reach them because it's mostly just a rant about anything and everything vaguely related to Linux. I should call it the weekly rant. 
I also can't set text in bold in the posts I write there because the little pop-up never appears. And finally, Epiphany triggers a lot of are you a bot dialogues. In the start page search engine, for example, I get blocked all the time because it seems to think I'm making suspicious requests. Most of the other websites I use work fine, although performance can be pretty terrible at times. ProtonDB is one of the worst offenders, but Reddit has the exact same problem. Pages load fast enough, no problem here, but some websites are just unusable and stuttering. And I know, in most cases, it's not Epiphany's fault, it's the website developer's fault for not optimizing for anything other than Chrome and the Blink rendering engine. Kudos, guys. Well done. But in the end, the end result is the same. I still need a second browser to be able to actually browse the web, and that's just not an ideal solution. On top of that, Epiphany is heavier than Firefox that I used before. For example, it uses 1GB of RAM for two Nextcloud tabs, compared to Firefox, which uses 650 megabytes for the same tabs. I personally don't really mind, because all my devices have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, but for people with more constrained hardware, it makes it hard to use, and so it makes it hard for me to recommend this browser to everybody. Next issue, the video playback. On most websites, it works just fine. I only had issues on one, and it's not a major website or anything, it's just YouTube. Oh no! Wait, it, it is a big deal. YouTube on Epiphany is basically a 50-50 thing. You can play any video you want, provided you're playing it from the start and not resuming from a previous play position. Sure, you'll get some weird flashing red effects when making the video bigger or when trying to load the comments, but why would you want to do that? But in general, the video plays. Now, if you're trying to resume a video you've watched but not finished, nope, won't work. It just spins endlessly. If you're trying to move forwards in a video, nope, doesn't work, it spins endlessly. If you try to go back to the beginning, it might resume playback, but not always because it spins endlessly. Reloading the page doesn't do anything either. Sometimes you will get playback, but only of the audio part. The video will stay frozen in place, and God forbid you try to play at a faster speed than 1x. You monster, why would you accelerate a video that somebody spent time making? because that will desync audio and video very quickly. This is probably the worst problem I have had with Epiphany. And keep in mind, it's both on my laptop and on my desktop with both beefy CPUs and the Mesa drivers or the Nvidia drivers. It's a general problem that everybody has. It makes Epiphany virtually useless as a daily driver. You can't play reliably any YouTube video. It's just one of the biggest websites on the internet, right? Who cares? Why can Safari do it and not Epiphany? I don't know, but this should definitely be a priority to investigate for the Epiphany developers. Maybe if Linus from LTT tries Epiphany, the developers will actually try and look into these issues. Who knows? He seems to have a very positive effect on stuff that people have been complaining about for years. Okay, but what about passwords? Epiphany does have a way to sync, save, store, reuse passwords, logins, etc., right? Well, Yes, but it doesn't really work either. First, the sync with Firefox isn't super reliable. I often get an issue telling me the sync secret is invalid and realize nothing has been synced for a while. But that's manageable. I just re-log in to the Firefox account and sync starts again. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Now, the real issue is that Epiphany doesn't really fill login forms on a lot of websites. On my accounting software, it doesn't fill either of the fields, login or password. In the website I work on, as a freelance product owner, it doesn't autofill either. And while it offers a list of logins, selecting them with the mouse doesn't work, using the arrow keys doesn't select them in the right order, and doesn't have any visual feedback, and it won't fill the password field, even if you understand that you need to press spacebar to select the login that you previously tried to select with the arrow keys. Basically, it's hit or miss again. But sure enough, you can go see the list of passwords in the settings. Well if you don't have too many passwords, because that list can take ages to load if you have a lot of credentials stored here. And since a lot of websites won't have anything pre-filled, you might want to copy the login and the password. But you can't do that in one go. You have to open the pop-up, wait for the info to load, search for the one login you want, copy the login, close the pop-up, paste the login, then redo it all over again for the password. 
I guess having the password and logins in a tab instead of a pop-up that blocks the rest of the browser would be more convenient in the end. Anyways, it's a terrible experience. So, after one month with Epiphany, will I stick to it? And as you might have guessed, the answer is a resounding no. Whether it's on Elementor OS or GNOME, Epiphany or GNOME Web just isn't a suitable browser. It can't really play YouTube videos. Its ad block is hit or miss. It has issues with remembering and filling logins and passwords, and its compatibility with various websites is just not up to par. Even though it shares Safari's engine, which has no issues working with these same websites. While I appreciate the fact that it looks just right on my desktop on GNOME and Elementor iOS, and the fact that it's just a browser without a feature overload, it's just not good enough for what a browser needs to do. So I will be moving back to Firefox, as it was already the secondary browser I used to pick up the slack when Epiphany let me down. But what of all the issues I pointed out in my previous videos? The non-native look and feel, the lack of vision and, and feeling for what a browser should be from Mozilla, and the fact that it adds unused features like Pocket. Well, these problems aren't as big as the ones Epiphany has, and the other choices I reviewed are just not up to par for what I want. People recommended LibreWolf and Falcon. Both of these didn't see a comet in at least a month, which doesn't inspire much confidence in the security of these things. Firefox can also look a lot more native on Elementor iOS and on GNOME than it ever could in KDE. And I can live with hiding Pocket and not using it. As per Mozilla's lack of vision and lack of focus on performance and compatibility, I can't really do much about that. All I can do is keep using Firefox and maybe try to contribute financially to something they do that I like so that they at least don't stop making it because everything else just doesn't work for me. So yeah, this experiment was a failure. <laughs> GNOME Web or Epiphany just isn't good enough to be daily driven as a browser for me and I guess for most people as well. So thank you guys for watching this video. It was made possible by Slimbook, and you probably all know about Slimbook, but I'm still going to tell you about them. They're based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptops and desktops. I only use their stuff nowadays. The desktop in the background is theirs. My laptop is a Slimbook Pro X14, and that keyboard is their Slimbook RGB keyboard. They have really good stuff for all price points. I left a link in the description below. If you need a new device, check it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, if you did don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications and if you didn't like it, you only have the comments left because the dislike button doesn't work anymore. And if you want to help support the channel, I have a Patreon page, you can also join the channel on YouTube, you'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. And also if you hate YouTube, what are you doing here? You should be on Odyssey, where all my videos are also synced. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!